All right, well, just like Superman had his alter ego of Clark Kent, our next guest has one, too, because by day, he is a specialist in internal medicine, and then on the side, he's playing the guitar and teaching children about medicine in a fun, unique, and interactive way. Please welcome to the show Dr. Steve Eskin, a.k.a. The Rock Doc. Hey, Steve. Hey, Danielle. I just love saying The Rock Doc. It's a great name, it's isn't it? It's a great gig because, <laughs> you. you know, you're combining medicine and music, and it almost seems to me like it's two different sides of your brain. Well, it is. Uh, I was born a, a musician, okay. though, and uh, I started out when I was about five years old, banging on tables doing rhythm. I'm sure your mom appreciated that. Oh, she loved it. Uh, <laughs> then they, they loved it even more after they got me a set of drums, and I started <laughs> to do it for real. Uh, then I, I picked up piano, I picked up guitar, I was always a singer, and I was doing it pretty seriously for uh, most of my early teens. Uh, when I got into my medical studies, I put it down. The reason I didn't take it that seriously was because I wasn't a writer. And that mm. actually began as a, a medical student. Did you incorporate ever any of your musical stylings into your um, learning of medicine? Absolutely. That's really where the whole rock doc idea germinated from. Uh, essentially, I found that in medical school, I had to memorize uh, certain things that were very complex, like the bilirubin pathway and the branches of the facial nerve. These are yeah. fairly involved names. <laughs> you lost me already. Right there, you see? <laughs> uh, just memorizing that, I could write a song. Right, but, right, uh, right. So I came up with the uh, fantastic ditty, Ten Zebras Bought My Car, yes, uh, which uh, represented the temporal, zygomatic, buxal, mandibular, and cervical chains of the facial nerve. I'm glad you said that. And that's why I still remember them today. Uh, so I feel, realized that this was something that I could probably do to teach the public, mm. uh, specifically kids, uh, because I was terrified of doctors when I was little. Mm. Uh, and I knew they needed some help just to kind of have some control over what's going on in the doctor's office so that they can understand a little bit about symptoms, about what doctors do. You can accomplish so much with music. You know, there was that great show in the 70s, Schoolhouse Rock, mm -hmm. uh, which taught us all about U.S. history. And, yep, you know, I'm just a bill, eh, yes, I'm only a Conjunction, bill. junction. What's those your function, kind of great, yeah. Exactly. Uh, so I decided to do the same thing for medical information. I thought uh, it would be useful. Uh, sure enough, I've performed uh, a lot of these performances uh, up in the New York City school system and it's been pretty successful. Good stuff. Well, do you remember when you were here on our show, The Balancing Act, a little while ago, and there was like a group of kids here on a field trip? Yes. You performed for them. It was great. It was great. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at that now. We need oxygen, right? Well, that's the lungs, and the singer is the lungs of the band. Here's a song about asthma. Clap your hands. Good. That's when you're breathing in Inspiration That's when you get your oxygen Inspiration, expiration, ventilation of air You're breathing out in Expiration That's when that trouble starts setting in Expiration Oh, Steve, it looked like the kids really enjoyed it. It looked like you enjoyed it, too. Oh, I have a blast. Oh, you know, so you've literally reached out to thousands of kids. You mentioned like 100,000 kids in just mm -hmm. the New York City area alone in your work up there. Um, what is it about kids that makes all of this so special to you, and how far do you go with it? Well, you try to reach them in a way that avoids all the fright, ah. okay? Because mm -hmm. people think that kids are afraid of the doctor, and they are when they're going to the doctor. Mm -hmm. But when they're not going to the doctor and they're just thinking about it and somebody's talking or presenting to them, they have no fear at that point. That's when you can reach them. You can reach them then uh -huh. before yeah. they actually sit in the seat and they're in the chair and right. they're thinking about all the bad things that could happen. Exactly. All right, so I know you probably have been asked this question a million times. I'm going to ask it a million and one. What do you think you like better, music <sighs> or medicine? That's a tough one. Uh, I like two, two different flavors there. Uh, in other words, the pleasure that comes with medicine uh, is a satisfaction, really, more than a visceral pleasure, which you get playing music and sucking in that warm uh, audience uh, response and the clapping and that kind of thing and just being able to uh, 
kind of put yourself in the stars while you're actually playing music, and that's a very, very strong pleasure. Uh, medicine is a pleasure through the satisfaction that you feel that you've actually done something useful for somebody. Sure, absolutely, and you so get satisfaction. Yeah, but you get satisfaction out of both of them, oh, which is a wonderful thing. Well, uh, Rock Doc, thank you so much for being here with Thanks us this morning again me. on the Balancing Act. Thank you. Alrighty, and if you would like to book Dr. Eskin for a singing gig or for more information on the Rock Doc, simply go to his website at rockdoc.com. Inspiration, exploration.